Hi guys, today I want to show you the Droid Forge. The Droid Forge is a graphical software for configuring your Droid, uh, the universal CV processor. So with the Forge you can tell your Droid what to do with all its inputs and outputs and knobs and, and stuff like that. Um, so installation and download is super easy, so I won't go into any details. So let's jump right to the main screen of the Forge. I'm just going to assume now that you already have mounted your Droid modules into your rack and wired them correctly, well, the whole thing is pretty straightforward and described in the user manual. So, as a first step, let's make sure that the Forge knows which Droid modules you are using. If you don't have a G8 or X7, you can simply hide them from the View menu. After that, we add our controllers. I just have a P2B8 here now. If you have more than one controller, please pay attention to the correct order, otherwise it won't work later. Okay, so we are ready to create our first patch. And as an example, I want to make an ADSR envelope. So you need to know that all patches in the droid are made up of so-called circuits. A circuit is just like a little virtual Eurorack module. And it has inputs and outputs. And there are quite a lot of different circuits predefined in the droid. And when you click this icon, uh, you come to the list of all circuits. And as fate would have it, the contour circuit is right the first in the list. So I choose it and select it and add it to my patch. As you can see here, below the contour circuit is a list. The blue entries are inputs, also called input parameters. For the envelope, these are the typical parameters attack, decay, sustain and release and so on. They are preset with um, useful default values. If you want to change a value, just move the cursor there with the mouse or the arrow keys and type in another number. By the way, this list is just a small fraction of what's available. There are many more parameters. Uh, with this icon you can get to the whole list and add more. Let's for example take shape, which changes the shape of the envelope between linear, logarithmic and exponential. What we are missing now is the connection to the outside world. Our envelope should be triggered by the first CV input of the master. For this, I bring the cursor to the field next to gate and then simply click on input one of the master in the rack view. We do the same for the output and outputs are always red in the list. So let's send the output of the envelope to CV output one from the master. Great, our first patch is ready to be loaded on the master. Just put the SD card from the master into the computer and the save to SD icon becomes active. This icon copies the patch to the SD card and ejects it. Now you just have to put it into the master and press the button and you are ready to go. If you have an X7, the whole thing is even more comfortable. Connect the USB cable from the X7 to the computer and set the switch on the X7 to the right. Then the activate icon becomes active and a click on it loads the patch directly to the master and activates it immediately without you having to press the button. Now it's time to bring our P2B8 controller to life. We want to control attack and release of the envelope with the two pots. To do this, I select the value of attack and then simply click on the first pot. For release it's the same way. And of course you can control several values with one pot, for example also decay. The range of a pot is always from 0 to 1, but if you want to control the value decay from 0 to 2 for example, you can multiply the pot value by 2. This is what the second column is for. To do this we simply enter a 2 here. Of course you also can attenuate a value. For example, if we multiply the attack pot by 0.5, the value only goes from 0 to 0 0.5. Therefore, you can also look at this second column as an attenuator. And the third column is an offset. If we enter 0.1 for attack, it will be added and the range will be from 0.1 to 0.6. So that you don't lose track of which control has which function, you can label them. The easiest way to do this is to use the edit label function from the context menu. Just enter a short term and it will be displayed in the rack view. By the way, there's also a handy shortcut here, Command L. Almost all functions in the Forge have a shortcut. You can always find them in the menu. And it's very easy to change the arrangement of the controls later. You can simply swap them with the mouse. To use the buttons, you have to go one step further. With the buttons, you can build quite complex user interfaces for your patch. But I want to make a simple example here. I want to be able to switch on with the first button that the envelope loops automatically so that it always starts again from the beginning when it has run through and works like a kind of LFO. For this I prepare the button so that it works like a toggle switch. 
At the first press it should turn on and at the second press it should turn off. This is done by the circuit button. Let's insert it into our patch. In the first line is the parameter button. It defines which button should be used. I make the connection as I did with the pots, simply by clicking. But other than pots, each button has an LED in it. To get this LED light up when the button is activated, the output LED must be linked with the LED in the button. The easiest way to do this is by clicking the bulb icon. Now we have to connect the output of the button to the loop parameter. First we add this parameter to the envelope circuit. Then we place an internal patch cable. With such cables you can connect circuits directly to each other to build more complex patches. To draw the cable I go to the field next to the output and select start creating internal cable. Now I move the cursor to the value of loop and press enter. It's best to give the cable a nice name, so you'll know it better later. And the patch is ready. Now you can switch looping on and off with the button. You can do much more with buttons. You can have buttons with more than two states or you can combine several buttons to a group so that only one of the group is active and you can switch between several things. Have a look at the description of the circuits that have button in the name. Sometimes you will have a problem in your patch. For example, each parameter must have a value and cables must always be connected at both ends. If something in your patch doesn't fit, the forge will help you. Let's delete the values hold and sustain as a test. As you can see, an error icon appears now. As long as it is there, you can't activate your patch. Just click on the icon to jump from error to error through your patch. As a last hint for today, I would like to recommend the Droid user manual. It's directly integrated into the Forge. You can find it in the help menu, but you can also select the circuit and then open the manual directly at the page where this circuit is described. That's it for today. I wish you have a lot of fun and creativity with your droid and I hope to see you soon on our Discord server. Find a link in the video description. And please subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any further droid videos.